Hello guys, welcome to the last section, case studies. In this section, we will look at the topics such as logging service, data access layer. Let's start with the first video of this section, logging service. In this video, we will start with logging frameworks followed by the design. Let's start off by looking at the logger profile. We will begin the logger profile design by creating a protocol named logger profile. This protocol will define the interface that the logger profiles will present, and any type that conforms to this protocol can be used to log messages. The out-of-the-box framework will provide two types that will conform to the logger profile protocol. These types will be of the logger null and logger console types. We will start off by looking at the logger profile protocol and the logger profile protocol extension. This is the highlighted code for logger profile protocol and the logger profile protocol extension. The logger profile protocol defines one property and one function. The property is named logger profile ID, which is of the string type. This property is used to uniquely identify the logging profile. The method defined in the protocol is named write log and will be called to write the log message to the display or storage medium defined by the profile. We created a protocol extension for the logger profile protocol, which adds a method named getCurrentDateString. This method returns a formatted date string of the current date and time. While types that conform to the logger profile protocol can elect not to use the getCurrentDateString method provided by the protocol extension, it is recommended that they do in order to ensure that all the logger profile types provide a date and time string with a consistent format. Next, we will see the logger null and logger console types as shown in this highlighted code. Both logger profiles have a unique ID defined in the logger profile ID constant. Reverse DNS name notation is used as the format for this ID. Reverse DNS notation is a naming convention that is commonly used for naming components, packages, and other types. A reverse DNS notation string is usually based on a registered domain name but the names are in reverse order. For these examples, I am using my name rather than a registered domain name. We also provide, for both types, an implementation of the write log method that is required by the logger profile protocol. For the logger null type, the write log method does not do anything with the message because this type is written to ignore any messages as if the messages were being sent to dev null. The write log method for the logger console type retrieves a string that represents the current date and time using the getCurrentDateString method provided by the logger profile protocol extension and then writes the log message to the console. Let's begin by defining the log levels that our framework will offer. We will use an enumeration to define these levels, as there is a finite number of these levels. This enumeration defines the log levels for our logging framework. The log levels enumeration defines five log levels. It also provides an array that contains all the five levels. This array can be used to retrieve all the log levels if needed. Post that, we will see the logger protocol. The logger protocol defines one property named loggers of the dictionary type. This dictionary has a log level that is defined in the log levels enumeration as the key and an array of types that conform to the logger profile protocol as the value. We also define one method in the logger protocol named write log. This method is called within the application to write a message to the logs. This method takes two arguments. The first argument is the log level to write the log message and the second is the log message itself. We define both the loggers property and the write log method as static so they can be accessed without having to create an instance of the logger type. Let's look at the code for the individual methods by starting off with the log level contains profile method. This method will return true if the log level contains the logger profile and will be used by the set log level and add log profile to all levels methods to ensure that we do not add a logger profile to a log level more than once. This method starts off by using optional binding to retrieve a list of logger profiles assigned to the log level. The forIn statement is used with a WHERE clause to loop through the list of logger profiles where the logger profile ID property matches the logger profile ID property of the profile it is looking for. If any item in the array matches this property, the method returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Next, let's look at the setLogLevel method as shown here. 
The set log level method uses the log level contains profile method to verify that the logger profile is not already assigned to the specified log level. If it isn't, then it will add the logger profile to that level. This method begins by using optional binding to retrieve the list of logger profiles assigned to the log level. This is done to verify that there is a valid array assigned to the log level. The log level contains profile method is used to verify that the logger profile is not already assigned to the level and, if not, it is added. If the optional binding fails at the start of the method, then a new array is created, the logger profile is added to this new array, and the array is assigned to the log level within the logger's dictionary. Next, let's look at the add log profile to all levels method. The add log profile to all levels method is used to add a logger profile to all the log levels. This can be used to initialize the logger framework by adding a single profile to all the levels. This method loops through each of the log levels and then calls the set log level method to try to add the logger profile to each individual log level. The next method that we will look at is the remove log profile from level method. The remove log profile from level method will remove the logger profile from the specified log level. This method starts off by using optional binding to retrieve the list of logger profiles for the log level. The index of method is used to locate the index of the logger profile that matches the logger profile that needs to be removed. If the profile is found, it is removed. The next method is the remove log profile from all levels method. The remove log profile from all levels method will attempt to remove a logger profile from all the log levels. This method will loop through all of the log levels that have been defined and call the remove log profile from level method in an attempt to remove the logger profile from that level. The final method in the logger protocol extension is the has logger for level method. The has logger for level method returns true if the log level contains any logger profiles, otherwise it returns false. This method uses optional binding with a guard statement to retrieve the list of logger profiles assigned to the log level. If the optional binding statement fails, then a false value is returned, otherwise a true value is returned. Now let's look at our logger type, which will conform to the logger protocol. The myLogger type has one property named loggers which is a dictionary whose key is a log level defined in the log level's enumeration and whose value is an array of types that conform to the logger profile protocol. The write log method is used within the applications to write a message to the log and it takes two arguments. The arguments are the log level to write the log message for and the log message itself. The myLogger type can be used as shown here. This sample code begins by adding the logger console logger profile to all the log levels. This will cause all the log messages, no matter what the log level is, to be logged to the console. The debug log level is then used to log the debug message one message, which will be written to the console. Finally, the error log level is used to log the error message one message. This message will also be written to the console. So, this is the output we'd get upon running the code. Here we end our video.